Hey there Akuma fans, Charlie with the Gossiper Application staff. Another video here for you. I just noticed that I had done a video some time ago on tool life management for the OSP milling machine for Akuma, but I've never done one for lathe, so I thought I'd jump right in and give you guys an example of how to utilize the um, tool life management function for a turning center. So basically the, uh, the situation is that I've got this great big five inch part here made out of stainless steel and I can only make one or two of them before I have to change my inserts, but I don't want to um, uh, have to stand by the machine, wait for it to be done. I would just as soon have redundant tools in my turret and once a, an insert has expired, I'd like to go ahead and have the machine automatically select another one. So I'm going to run my program first just so that you can see what it is. It's uh, fairly simple and I'll yakety yak while it's moving, but uh, basically I just took a five inch chunk of steel and with the turning tool I'm cutting a taper all the way down to a one inch diameter. I've got everything spun up as fast as it'll go here just so that uh, I don't bore you guys to tears. I it's against my better judgment to uh, lose people in the first 30 seconds of a video. So uh, here's my tool shape and as soon as that, well as it's running I'll go ahead and open up the program just show you that there's really nothing special to it. I am using the J85 turning can cycle. A couple of little adjustments but that's it. It's just roughing. It's I'm not even finishing the darn thing. There's not even a G87 in there. so. Uh, it's really nothing special to it. But this particular program does not have the redundant tool features. So I'm going to take the exact same program and I'm going to change a couple of things in my, uh, my program very slightly. Here, let's open up the other one so you can see that it's the, uh, it's the exact same program. But instead of the tool call that you see here of T010101, just as a refresher, the first two digits are the nose radius compensation, second two digits are the turret position, and the third two digits are the XZ offset to use. However, if I would like to use tool life management, I'm going to change that to TG equals, and that TG equals is my tool group and then OG equals offset group number one. Now you have several different tool groups and we'll take a look at that at a sec in a second, but so that number will change. However, the offset group is almost always going to be one unless you need to use a second offset for a specific tool. Say for instance, it's a groove tool and you have an offset on the front of the groove and on the back of the groove. Well, I may have to use offset group 2 in that case, but uh, we're not doing that here, so we're just going to call it tool group number 1, offset group number 1. And the other change that I made when I canceled my tool call, something that's not required unless you have a, a y-axis machine, instead of saying T0100, I say tool group equals number one and offset group equals zero. And there's also this nice little code down here at the bottom that you don't see on this side, TLID. That's the tool life identification. I'm saying that, hey, I just finished cutting apart, so I want you to increment my tool life count. So let's select this program. And the, the program setup is only half the battle. Now I've got the tool group and the offset group and I've also got the tool count, but I have to set up these groups. So I'm going to come up to my control panel and touch the tool data button. I'm sure we're all used to seeing this. Just so that you can take a look at what I've done, I have uh, two tools in here. They are both standard CNMG turning tools in double holders. Nothing special. They're both pretty close to being the same. They do not have to be the same. Uh, they don't have to be identical. They don't even have to be the same stick out. But considering that I'm using them both for the same thing, 
probably would be a good idea if at least they were both CNMGs. So instead of looking at the tool info, the management information processing page, I'm going to come over here and find my F8 display change. Most people don't use this or maybe they just use the offset page. But if you look down here at the bottom, tool life management, number of work, cutting time, wear amount, aha, here we go, here's a little something something. If you don't see these on your page, try with this window open, pushing the arrow over button once, clicking on menu change, and then making sure that your tool life management uh, fields have a check mark in front of them. If you don't, if it does not have a check mark, you won't see it in this block here. So we do have three different ways of managing the tool. Let's concentrate on the number of pieces right now. If you do the cutting time, that's fine. It will track the amount of time that a tool is in G1, 2, or 3 mode. It will not um, monitor rapids, which is of course good. You're not really cutting at that point. But we're going to do number of work. So I highlight number of work. I close this down. Here is my tool group table. Tool groups 1 through 16. And uh, just as a footnote, unless you're using an LT machine, you won't be using tool groups 13, 14, 15, and 16 because those correspond with turret stations, which obviously, if you're using an LB or an LU machine, you don't have those. So I want to look at the two turret stations where I have tools mounted. Here they are right here. Let's do a quick angle change so you can see. I've got one in tool number one and one in tool number six. So back over here I'm going to find turret number one and I'm going to tell it that my group number is one because that's what I put in my program. I have up to 64 different groups to put in there, but I like to uh, I like to keep it simple. So we'll set this to group number one. The next question is set. How many parts am I able to run with this tool? Now I'm going to put one in there because I want to be able to show you guys the uh, uh, the actual tool changing. So let's not set that too dramatic. The actual is where I can put in the number of parts that this tool has already made. The, the computer will automatically increment this every time it reads the TLID. And also, if you noticed on the uh, right, we have a bar graph that's showing me how much of the tool is remaining. If I were to set that, say, to 1, the remaining goes away. Let's just mess with it a little bit and show you that, hey, there's 50% because I set it to two. I've already made one. We're at 50%. But put that all back to where it was. And then we have the OG1, OG2, and OG3. These are the actual offsets that we want to use when I call up offset group one. So what I am going to suggest to you is that you use the same number as the turret position. Most of us are using T0101, not necessarily T0121 or 31. Generally, we'll keep the turret number and the um, offset number the same. Offset group two and offset group three, I'm not using them in this case, so we're going to leave them blank. Then I have the gauge and life, which says both of these are OK. I'm going to leave those alone because those will increment when the tool goes into no good status. The other tool that I want to add to this group, as you saw from my, uh, from my collision avoidance, is tool number six. So I want to make sure that I set that to the same group number. And let's set that to, say, four tools. That's a, that's a little beefier insert. And offset group one, I'm going to set that to six because I want it to be the same as the tool number. And then the rest of these across the board, I'll leave alone because they belong to the machine. Now, here's a key for you. I've already set up all the information, but the machine will not necessarily read it. So once I've set my data, I want to arrow over one time and find the initialize button above F4. 
when I touch that it's going to ask me do you want to initialize all of your tool groups or just a group number in my case I only have one group so I can say all but if I uh, had multiple tools being controlled in different ways I'd want to initialize just the group number that I reset by the way when you change inserts this tool data initialize is going to be repeated that's how we set everything back to being new tools but I haven't made anything yet I do need to initialize just to kind of wake up the system so I hit OK and now the tool group is initialized I'm going to go into my large collision avoidance here and let's let's move this around just a little bit so that you can see there we go now let's automatic mode and cycle slam notice what tools in cutting position this is tool number one if I wasn't sure it's listing it over here even though my program said TG equals 0, 01 and OG equals 0, 01 it's still showing me the actual tool in my DRO also if I'm on my main operating screen it'll show me that that tool in particular so now we're getting down to the bottom I'm really making some racket and if you recall I selected one tool or one part available for that tool now that it's run I'm gonna click back over to my tool data just to show you that now my remaining bar graph is gone my tool life is listed as no good now I didn't notice anything I just loaded up the next part and I'm ready to go slow it down this time and hit start without doing anything just loading it apart and hitting start notice that now it put tool number six in the cutting position and it's off and rocking that's tool life management and I can put as many tools as I have spaces in there I'm not limited to only having one redundant tool heck if I only have a one tool job I could have 12 cutting tools in there as long as they are all registered in the same group in my tool data block as soon as that finishes up we're gonna see this uh, the actual go to one because it will have made one part and my bar graph will drop ever so slightly there it went now because I'm an industrious fella I want to reload those tools yep I changed all my inserts everybody's happy and as I mentioned before once I've done that I want to come over here and initialize let's this time let's do our group number and say we're gonna initialize group number one okay it switches back the tool life to okay gives me my full remaining bar graph and reset my actual so now I'm ready to take off again one last thing to mention before we rubber stamp this uh, this video is being done we've just seen how to make it make the tool life management function work with the number of pieces made however I'd also like to talk about doing it under the cutting time the page looks almost exactly the same as what we saw in the count but here instead of specifying a number of pieces to make we'll specify the amount of time that the tool stays in a cut specified in hours and minutes so in this case I've set my tool number one to about one minute uh, just so that I can see it expire and then my redundant tool number six is uh, capable of running for 30 minutes so I'm going to go ahead and hit start and you'll notice that it puts the tool number one that the lowest tool number in the group is in the offset uh, I'm sorry the lowest tool number that's in the group is called up first if everything is good and now I'll come back over here and you notice it ticking away counting down the uh, the number of seconds to make I'm gonna slow this thing down for just a second and show you a couple of other things here while uh, while that cut is going on from my page where you uh, you saw me a second ago I arrowed right one time to show you first off the parameter setting button if I call this up I need to make sure that the processing that I want to do is set to manage the management by process there we go that that's the number of parts 
is set to manage and now I've also made sure that management by total cutting time is set to manage. You do not have to turn these on and off as you use them but if they were not set from the factory as being in manage mode then uh, you won't be able to uh, to have the redundant tool function for you. The other thing I wanted to point out is F5, the group table. If I call that up there's nothing to enter here but it will show you for your individual groups what tools are entered in that group 1 through 12 or however many groups your options have. Let's go see how our parts doing. We're still in the cut and my tool has now completely expired. As you notice it's still going to function. It's still going to run. It's not going to pull out of the uh, out of the cut to um, uh, to let me know that the tool has expired. It will continue to cut until the end of the program and then it will retract as normal. Let's speed that up faster, faster, faster. Um, it uh, will simply finish working with this tool and then retract and the next time I hit cycle slam we're going to see it pick up the second tool. So let's get everybody going fast just so that we can see the um, the process. There we go. We've retracted. Now this time when I hit cycle start you'll notice that zoop, puts tool 6 in the spindle and tool number 1 has been flagged as no good and will stay that way until um, until I hit the initialize button again. Hope this helps you out. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to your local Gossiger application staff. We're here to help you. I also do respond to comments that uh, are left on individual videos, so feel free to holler if you've got a question. Thanks.